In this session today, we will discuss about the general features of Neolithic Revolution. The term Neolithic was coined by Sir John Lubbock in 1865 in his book Prehistoric Times to denote an age in which the stone implements were more varied and skillfully made and often polished. The Neolithic or New Stone Age denotes a stage of human culture following the Paleolithic and Mesolithic periods. Slowly, in course of time, the later Neolithic periods with the discovery of smelting and the creation of copper tools have been identified as Chalcolithic period and then cultures with bronze artifacts have been given the name or coined as Bronze Age. These developed periods with invention of different metals would develop agriculture and farming activities led to the emergence of more complex societies and all these complex societies emerge in the fertile valleys of the Nile Tigris Euphrates Yellow and Indus rivers These settlements with surplus agricultural product and trade subsequently resulted in the rise of the great civilizations in Egypt Mesopotamia China and India Some of the early centers where early domestication of plants and animals has been recorded are in West Asian contexts Several early Neolithic sites have been identified at Jericho and Ain Ghazal in Jordan, Tepe Guran and Eli Kosh in Iran, Ketel Huyuk in Turkey, and Kayonu in North Syria. which reveal evidence of early agriculture of wheat and barley and domesticated animals such as sheep and goats. In Southeast Asian contexts, excavations at the Spirit Cave in Thailand reveal plants remains of almond, pepper, cucumber, betel nut, beans and peas. However, it is yet to confirm whether all of them were cultivated. In East Asian contexts, South China has revealed evidence of rice, cultivation and domestication of water buffalo, dog and pig. In South American contexts, the people of Mexico were engaged in growing corn, beans, squash, gourds, avocados, and chili pepper, and domesticating turkeys, dogs, and honeybees. In the sub-Saharan African context, the cultivation of finger millet, sorghum, rice, teff, and yams, and the domestication of sheep, goats, and cattle have been recorded. 
and South Asian contacts, Mehrgar has yielded evidence of barley and wheat cultivation and cattle, sheep and goat domestication. Recent excavations at the site of Lahura Deva in Uttar Pradesh have brought to light early dates for rice cultivation in India. Now, let's talk about comparison between hunter-gatherers and farmers. Some of the basic differences between hunter-gatherers and farmers are hunter-gatherers economy was based on wild resources while farmers economy was based on domesticated crops and animals. Hunter-gatherers had low population density while the farmers had high population density. There was stability for hunter-gatherers whereas there was need for expansion for farmers due to increase in population. Hunter-gatherers had relatively little impact on environment while farmers cleared land for arable farming and these had an impact on livestock. There is a sparse archaeological record for hunter-gatherers while there is archaeological imprint for farmers on landscape. Now let's talk about Neolithic Revolution. The term Neolithic Revolution was introduced by B. Gordon Child in 1936. It led to several changes in human societies which include the creation of cities and permanent dwellings, food storage and granaries, pottery making, labor specialization, sense of personal property, more complex hierarchical social structures, non-agricultural craft specialization, trade and barter systems, etc. From being nomads before the onset of agriculture, humans adopted the sedentary lifestyle relying on domestication of plants and animals for their survival. Let us now talk about features of Neolithic Revolution. First, domestication of plants. The human evolution in the last 10,000 years before present, also termed as the Holocene period, witnesses a revolutionary change in the history of mankind. During this time, early men acquired the knowledge of taming and bringing several animals and plants under their control. Domestication is an evolutionary process during which many behavioral traits have changed from the wild types to the existing domesticated populations. Agriculture was adopted repeatedly and independently in various parts of the world after the retreat of the Pleistocene ice around 12,000 years ago. The earliest evidence of agricultural development occurs in the area known as the Fertile Crescent, the present-day Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Israel. <clears throat> Agriculture also developed in other areas such as China and Mesoamerica but at a later date. Plants such as wheat and barley were cultivated in Southwest Asia while rice was cultivated in East, South 
and Southeast Asia. Maize in America and sorghum and millet in Africa. Now, let's look at the centers of agriculture origin, single or multiple. The hunter-gatherers of the Near East, that is, Fertile Crescent, were probably the first to adopt an agricultural lifestyle around 8500 BC. They were followed by the maize cultivators of central Mexico around 8000 BC and the rice producers along the Yangtze River around 7500 BC. Recent genetic research has indicated that multiple domestication of the same wild plants and animals probably have occurred more often than previously believed. For instance, it has been shown that goat was independently domesticated in the Indus Valley whereas cattle were domesticated both in the Near East and in the East Asia. In Europe, agricultural practices were adopted only after the spread of domesticated plants and animals from the Near East. In a review published in the journal Science on the expansions of the farmers to different parts of the world, Jerry Diamond and Peter Bellwood showed intimate connections of agricultural origins with the language spread and dispersals. According to them, until the end of the Pleistocene, all people on all continents lived as hunter-gatherers and subsequently at different times between about 8500 and 2500 BC. Food production based on domestication of relatively few wild plants and animal species arose independently in different homelands of agriculture and herding scattered over all inhabited continents except Australia. Now let's look at the causes of domestication of plants. Several hypotheses are made for explaining the causes of domestication of plants. B. Gordon Child in 1952 suggested that environmental changes at the end of the Pleistocene were impetus towards food production and argued that about 10,000 years ago, the climate in parts of West Asia became drier due to a northward shift of the summer rains. This drying up led to a concentration of people, plants, and animals close to water resources such as rivers and oases. This eventually led to new relationships of dependence between humans, plants and animals resulting in domestication. This theory was however questioned by Robert J. Bradwood in 1960. He opined that environmental changes had occurred within the Pleistocene and had not led to agriculture and argued in certain nuclear zones domestication was a natural outcome of human experimentation. The theory of Bradwood was criticized by Lewis R. Binford in 1968 that emphasized on the external demographic stress and argued that at the end of the Pleistocene era, as a result of a rise in sea levels, 
people living along the coast migrated to less populated inland areas. This upset the people food equilibrium in inland areas and gave an impetus to the search for new strategies to increase food supplies. Considering the variety in ecology and resources in the various centers of early plant and animal domestication, it is very possible that different factors may have been involved in different parts of the world. David Harris presents a model for transition from hunting-gathering stage to agriculture in four stages. The first stage involves wild plant food procurement by the hunter-gatherers who occasionally burn the vegetation, gather and protect useful plants and fruits. In the second stage, human energy and input is minimal and the environment is neither affected in large scale nor dramatically changed. The third stage is characterized by wild plant food production with some tillage which can be considered as an important step towards agriculture. In the fourth stage, men propagated seeds from some selected plants with desirable characteristics in new habitats and after harvesting, some of the seeds were stored for future use. <laughs>